I just took the Richard King scraping class and learned a lot and one of the things I learned was about adding material to the bottom of something that you need to raise up usually in machines where you have a traveling surface you use um, Rulon, product called Rulon, some other similar type stuff which is a Teflon coated bearing surface. Um, but my issue I have here is I have these two vices that I'd like to use on the same machine and unfortunately they're different heights. So this one is 0.179 inches lower than this one. So I have to raise this one up. So when you have to go greater distances um, and you don't really have a lot of wear, so this vise is going to be in the same place, uh, there's a product called, uh, there's lots of products, but this one's called Garolite, uh, Garolite LE. And what I've done is I've just roughed, marked it out. So I'm going to cut this out and then bond it to the bottom of the vise. Now Richard recommends uh, the Garolite with linen, not cotton. Because when you go to scrape it, um, the linen, for some reason, is, is better than the cotton. I think the cotton, you get fuzzy fibers. So the plan now is to cut this out. Bond it to the bottom, then I'll do a rough cut with the fly cutter type thing, cut it down to within a thousandth of what I want, maybe half a thou. Now this vise has a bunch of uh, surfaces that aren't machined on the bottom, and I want to kind of remember what's there, because when I put the phenolic down, I'm going to leave most of it um, one solid piece instead of having these pieces in it. So what I'm going to do, I'll try this, see if this works at all. Try and just rub a pencil on here. Alright, that gives me a pretty accurate layout of what the uh, bottom side of the vise looks like. Take these magnets off. On this uh, plate I made, I put a hole every two inches, half inch hole. And then what I did was uh, got these oh, plugs half inch threaded plug so anywhere I need to hook something or bolt something down I just pull out the plug. Something I did years ago. I have a video showing me drilling these holes in this plate. Before you can glue the uh, phenolic bottom on you have to put grooves in the metal for have a place to, for the glue to sit. Now I'm going to use a scraper for that. Normally on the scraper you use in here this part of the blade. But what we want is we want a, a deeper groove and normally you don't ever do this. You're going to use the, the edge of the uh, blade and put a gouge in it. And you're just going to go along like you're scraping it except you use that edge.
Okay, I couldn't get the beginnings of a lot of these cuts because uh, the edge here, you'll chip your, your cutter here. So what I'm going to do is flip the vise around 180 and then finish this edge along here. Okay, once you cut all these screws in, you want to go around and stone it to get rid of any burrs around here and make it flat. After stoning and scraping, you have to vacuum. Oh, you got to clean the part off, so I vacuum it. Then I'm going to clean it off with a little acetone. I took the uh, material, this uh, fiber board, and before you can glue it on, you have to rough this surface up as well. So I just took some 40 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander and uh, roughed it up. Um, so these two surfaces now are ready to glue together. All right, now I need to mix up the epoxy that's going to hold the fiber board on. I'm using this JB Weld, um, the black. It's for uh, adhesive uh, plastic to metal stuff. Anyway, we're going to open it up and squeeze out a bunch. This has about 15 minutes working time, just more than enough time to do this. Okay, let's see more white than that. So put this on here. I don't want to get it too spilt over into the areas that don't get plastic. Now, this spatula has a bunch of V-notches in it so that um, it's like putting down tile, so when you put the two pieces together, the epoxy has somewhere to go. Okay, I'm going to mix up another batch, and this goes on to the fiber board. This is the best I can mix in with the groove. Oh well. Okay. I can barely see my lines. Just put it on here. It doesn't go. to somehow flip this vice over. <sighs> Onto the plastic. Ok, 
Okay. Now, for extra pressure, I'm going to put a second vise on top of this vise. Clamping pressure. Now, one thing that you got to be very careful of, like right now, this could float right off of here. See, it doesn't take much to move it. So, got to be very careful while it's drying that it doesn't float away. It looks like it keeps wanting to come back this way. Yep. So, I'll have to watch this for the next 15 minutes. Now, this is cured for about four hours. It feels dry. So I'm going to go on the bandsaw here and I'm going to cut cut off the extra. I'm also wearing a dust mask because uh, anytime I'm cutting into fibrous material I'm, I'm concerned about the dust generated. Let's give it a try here. Okay, I've measured this, these two vices now, two different ways. One with the depth micrometer, and one with uh, this gauge here. I set it, you can't see it, but it's set for zero on, that reads zero there. So, I'm getting 24 thousandths difference. I don't know how well this is going to film because of this plastic enclosure, but um, I'm going to machine that fiber board off on this machine. Um, right now, I'm trying to get it within a thousandth. My, I know my quill is accurate to half a tenth, or I mean to uh, half a thousandth. So uh, I think I can do it, but I got to get any little bumps and stuff out of here so it doesn't throw it off because just a little tiny bump could throw it off, you know, half a tenth or something. I've never had this machine scraped. I've measured it. It seems to come out fairly, fairly flat. Maybe someday I'll take it apart. Take it down and have somebody grind it flat. Okay, that's pretty good. So it should be okay. Okay, my arms are going to be in the way, but it's going to have to be. Oh, okay, that feels feels pretty good. It's hinging towards the ends, which is what I would expect for something like this. I just got to figure out a way to hold it down. Won't be much cutting force with this fiber. Okay, I got it strapped down. In here I put a piece of uh, metal across. There's a slot inside there that held that down. At the other end I put the handle in and I'm clamping it down. So it's it's more than solid enough for this uh, light skimming cut I'm going to do on this phenolic. So now what I'm going to do is um, fill in around this with paper towels because I don't want to get all this fibrous material down in my uh, slots on my table because right now there's oil sitting in the bottom of there. And that'll just make a big old huge sludge mess. Okay, I'm going to pick up my Z over here. I come up. I can't come up with the table much. 
Okay, measuring this is kind of difficult, but uh, what I have here is you can't really see, I'm sure, but that's uh, 250 and one half a ten, uh, thousandths. And then over here, I get 251. I took the Richard King scraping class and we learned how to do this flaking technique. And it's, uh, it's amazing how quickly you can pick it up and if you get the technique down um, it just moves right along. They also had a powered flaker there and that was really nice. Um, you could get beautiful half moons really easy and really fast. Now the reason I did this is just so that um, the jaws, I know sometimes they kind of stick when you scrape them back and forth and by flicking it they don't stick as much. Alright, here's the, uh, let me set this to zero. It's my tense indicator. This is the original vise. Now we'll uh, see where the other one ended up. Well, that's not too bad there. A couple of tents of being level, so I'm happy with the results.